But holy moly, in the air, 90 FPS, Enigma Cold War server, full server, super clean. Yeah, man, I can't believe this. Tweaking DCS for VR and finding the optimal settings for a stable FPS can be quite a pain. I had to spend an entire week of constant adjustments, testing, system crashes and near surrenders to find the perfect settings. In this video, I will guide you step by step through what I did to achieve really unbelievable results in DCS, in both single and multiplayer. First things first, you should always start the new multi-threading version of DCS. How? Well, you navigate to where you have installed the DCS and open the bin MT folder. In this folder, you will find the DCS.exe file that will run the multi-threading version. Now, the new DCS multi-threading version will operate in OpenXR, but to ensure it, we can also force it. So I will be adding something to the target in the shortcut here. And we will add the following to the target, dash dash force underscore enable underscore VR to just run the game in VR. And we will be adding dash dash force underscore OpenXR just to make sure the game runs in OpenXR. You can just copy these target lines in the description below. All right, so that is done, but we are not getting in game yet. I am using an NVIDIA 3080 Ti card and so we can change some settings in the NVIDIA control panel. I have no clue about AMD cards, but perhaps you can find the same settings over there. So I suggest that you keep watching. Now, if you have an NVIDIA card, open the control panel and navigate to manage 3D settings and click on program settings to add DCS. All right, I will go over what I have changed here. We turn FXAA off, multi-frame samples off, power management to maximum performance, a vertical sync off, and virtual reality pre-rendered frames. Now, online everyone is talking about putting them on free. For me, one just works perfect and gives no issues. Maybe play with it, see if you can see some changes. If you don't, I would suggest leaving it at one. Also make sure to download the OpenXR toolkit. Open it once and make sure that the settings are the same as here on the screen. Should be by default. All right, can we go in game yet? Nope, not yet. First for the Quest 2 and Pico 4 owners, open the Oculus and Pico app on your PC. For the Oculus Quest 2, go to devices, click on your Quest 2 icon and on the right side, click on graphics preferences. For the Pico 4, open it and go to the top right and click on settings. Scroll just a bit down until you see 90 Hertz refresh rates. Because I would suggest in the beginning for both the Quest and the Pico 4 to just leave it at 72 Hertz. Of course, getting 90 FPS in DCS is absolutely fantastic, but to get that super stable in a multiplayer match, let's first make sure we can get 72 stable. And I can tell you one thing, if you can get a stable 72 FPS in game and the indicators look sharp, it's going to be an amazing experience. So, okay, just let, let's leave it at that. I also leave the render resolution at just 1x here in Quest. Okay, Quest owners, one more thing to do here. Go to settings, go to general, and make sure that the Oculus is set as the active open XR runtime, not Steam VR. For Quest 2 users only, get the Oculus Tray Tool. This is true magic. Oculus Tray Tool is a free application that helps you to get the most out of your Oculus headset. If only the Pico 4 had this. The link to get this tool is in the description like any other link I have uh, talked about. In the Oculus Tray Tool, we want to adjust some settings to gain a significant boost in FPS. And that is the FOV multiplier. Now, what does this do? Well, when you have the headset on, you see an image, of course. But there is a big part around that image that is rendered, but you just will not see that. So we can get rid of that part. So we start with setting the FOV multiplier to 0.6 and 0.6, both left and right. Then connect the Oculus headset to your PC and you will probably see some black bars. 
that means you have to adjust it a bit. You have to make it a bit wider. So mine is set at 0.7 and the right one is set as 0.65. And I don't see any black bars and I save a lot of, a lot of GPU frame time here. Now you will have to disable uh, and connect it again to see the effects, but a huge FPS boost here, huge. Also here, don't forget to turn off adaptive GPU scaling if that's automatically turned on. Okay, so we are in game. Uh, let's first take a look at the in-game settings here. Texture is high. It is not too much of a GPU killer. So start with high if you have the same card as me and then lower it if you want. Terrain textures high as well. I would see that, well, if you are flying high and you don't really care at all about ground things, just pump it to medium or low. Uh, but again, not a huge uh, GPU killer here. Civilian traffic looks bad anyway, turn it off. Water, uh, I put that to medium. Visible range, uh, I put that to medium. That's how far objects are drawn. Heat blur is off, looks good on 2D, but in VR, mwah. Shadows, big one here, guys. Um, some people put it on high, drains a lot of FPS. I put mine to medium, I like the cockpit shadows, but you can put it to flat only if you want, or low if you uh, really want to gain some FPS. If you really don't care about shadows at all, you can turn them off and it will save you a lot of GPU frame time. Uh, secondary shadows, you can turn that off. The resolution is just the, the game screen on the on the monitor. Uh, resolution of the cockpit displays. I have not been really testing these. I've put mine on 512 every frame. Looks very sharp. Uh, no, no complaints here. A big one here, MSAA. I've turned that I've turned that off. Some people say for multiplayer purposes, if you turn it off, you can spot better. If you put it to times two here, it's kind of a uh, FPS killer here. So uh, try it out first off and go for times two if you think you can handle it. Depth of field off, lens effects, non motion blur off, motion blur amount is just doesn't matter. Clouds, I put that to standard. But some people put it to high. For me, standard, it's, it, it looks great in VR. SSAA off, SSLR off, SSAO off, uh, this I don't care. Clutter of grass, get that off. Get that off. Grass looks terrible at all. Uh, first of all, turn it off. CPU killer. Forest visibility. I think this is kind of standard here what I've put. Uh, you can copy it, but you can just tweak it to yourself. Um, forest details factor, same. Scenery details factor, kind of default I would say. Preload is radio, how much it loads, just a bit in the middle here. Chimney smoke density, meh, turn it off. Uh, the gamma over here, turn it a bit lower. I think the default one is like two point something. I put mine to 1.7 or 1.6. External field of view, we don't care. Uh, here, anti-sotropic anti filtering, six, 16 times. Uh, it's nice Tra uh, for roads and all of that. Terrain object shadows off. This doesn't affect any of the cockpits. Uh, it's just like uh, shadows of buildings and all of that. Turn it off. Cockpit global illumination. Uh, to be honest, I don't know why it's on. I turn that off. It's kind of annoying. Message, font scale one and then rain droplets. Yeah, why not? V-Sync doesn't matter in VR, full screen. Put this to your liking. Okay, click save here. Okay. Okay, one more thing to do here. Press control, left control F2 and we will open the OpenXR toolkit. Here, we leave the overlay off. Upscaling, sharpening, we put that to CAS. Oh, let me turn it back, CAS. Sharpness, 35%. Fixed foveated rendering off. Turbo mode, on the Quest 2, turn it on, turn it on. Frame rate throttling, off, and record statistics on no. And then we can just exit and jump in game. I could not believe my eyes at first, but here we are. Enigma Cold War server, a full server, and we are hitting 72 FPS stable. I am recording, that's why it dips a little bit. So, uh, but everything looks so sharp. It's a little bit zoomed in. That's because of the FOV uh, multiplier. Planes flying over. And normally this would stutter so much. But uh, as you can see here, 72 FPS. So, so happy with this results here. Taking off here, planes are flying over. Keeping that 72 FPS here, super stable. And again, sharp indicators. I can even put uh, at 1.5 the render resolution in the Quest 2 if I want. And well, here we are in the skies. If we go into a dogfight right now, it would never dip below uh, below 72 here. So uh, try it out for yourself. Super curious here. I'm so excited, man, to play more VR uh, multiplayer DCS. Now it runs stable. Quickly testing 90 hertz here in multiplayer. We cannot reach it. 
But holy moly, in the air 90 FPS Enigma Cold War server, full server, super clean. Oh, man, I can't believe this. I'd rather play on 72 though, because it's more stable. But okay, here, single player again, 72 hertz, quest 2. It's a little bit zoomed in, as you can see. That's because of the FOV multiplier. But it really never dips here, below 72. Just never. Here are 90 hertz. I'm, by the way, flying in free flight. It's a bit harder to maintain 90 FPS, but the 72 FPS is super stable, even in a little bit more crowdy uh, situations. Now, this is one of those crowdy situations here. Spitfire, super clean, sharp image. Here it dips, but that's just because of the uh, recording. I don't know, OBS is draining a lot of GPU frame time. Just when I have OBS open, I don't know why that is, but if I don't record here, it, it is just 72. It's super strange. Just by having OBS open here. But I uh, just want to show you this footage real quick. And then it gets back to 72 the moment I get up in the air. Little dogfight here with the Spitfire, 90 FPS, 90 Hertz. There are some planes around me, not too busy. Kind of stays 90 FPS, but again, I, I prefer 72 Hertz. Alright, let's test the Pico 4, but before we do that, open the OpenXR Toolkit, Control F2, and move to the System page. And then adjust the field of view, here the adjustment, to around 60%. It will zoom all in, but it will be all fine the moment you press Exit. And this somehow has the same effect as the FOV multiplier in the Oculus Tray tool. Not exactly, but it will help you get some extra performance. Now here we are, 72 FPS, and I can tell you one thing, the Pico 4 is so sharp. 72 FPS um, in single player, <sighs> crazy sharp indicators. I can even read the smallest text here, and it stays there, although this is a free flight, but even though in a more busier environment, it stays at 72 in single player, that is. Oh, so happy with these results with the Pico 4, definitely. All right, here in the Tomcat on the carrier deck, 72 FPS, as you can see here on the left side. Man, this is sharp. This is sharp. I couldn't believe my eyes again. And, ah, oh, man, playing campaigns right now on a 72 stable with such a clean and sharp image is absolutely insane. Love it. Here in Enigma Cold War server, a full server, Pico 4, 72 Hz, planes flying over. It's kind of harder here to maintain at 72 FPS. I mean, the Oculus Tray tool is just magic for the Quest 2, and I hope the Pico 4 gets a similar tool here. When I'm not recording, it stays kind of at 72, and sometimes drops into rip projection mode. Now here in the skies, uh, again, when I'm not recording, it stays at 72. Super sharp, really a sharp image but it sometimes wants to get back in reprojection mode. So that's why I am kind of preferring the Quest 2 here. Uh, it is a super sharp image and it stays at 72. I can't be more happy with these results, especially for the Quest 2, with all the tweaking and in every single situation, maintaining a 72 FPS, also in a full multiplayer server, that's just crazy. Unfortunately, it's hard to bypass Steam VR with the Pico 4. As you have seen, I use the streaming assistant here, but uh, normally I use virtual desktop and even there it works absolutely fantastic. Of course, this all depends on your machine. My specs are in the description below, but hey, let's help each other. Try these settings for yourself and tweak them to your liking and share them here down in the comments below with your system specs. And help each other guys let's help each other let's help each other get the best out of the vr experience in dcs now i hope this video helps you and just a simple like supports me enough thanks again and i see you in the next one ciao ciao